Hey everybody, what's up? What's up? What's up? God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. God is the best all the time, all the time. God is the best. God is the greatest all the time, all the time. God is the greatest. And uh, I give him thanks that he allowed me to see today. Um, I certainly rejoice and I'm glad that I was able to see today in my right mind, in good health and strength, looking to make things better each day because, you know, I'm not at the best me now, neither are you at the best you now. Um, so we got to give God thanks. You know, growing up, um, I mean, living in Jamaica has been a wonderful experience. I had a good childhood, meaning I may play a whole leap. When Mr. Ramp, 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 I mean, I played, I really, I still have that whole heap of energy left inside of me. Like, I could just go and play a hopscotch and do all of them kind of, you know, things to make you happy. Because a merry heart is like medicine. And uh, one of the sad things that I've realized over the years as I got older and as I get older and older is that persons are becoming less and less happy and merry. They do not know how to enjoy life anymore in Jamaica, I'm talking now specifically because they've allowed a lot of the negatives what we're facing, especially in recent in a recent wave of months, this crime and violence that we've been experiencing. You know, last night I was watching a mother who when she cried, uh, if, if she had continued a minute more, I'd have had to turn off the TV because I tell people I can know when a mother has lost her child as opposed to losing her spouse you know there is a difference in the wailing in the crying in the bawling because it is very deep and cutting because knowing that you have given birth or you had that child in your belly for nine months and the child has grown up and you see potential in that child becoming a future president or a future prime minister somebody of importance and somebody of worth and for their lives to be annihilated, you know, sadly, unfairly, it's not an easy road. But I want to bring some encouragement to everyone. And not only encouragement, because they work in tandem, you know, is that we have to, in spite of the negatives, we, we need to be a people of accountability and be a people of we are we are brothers and our sisters keep us now gone are the days when my when you were children well maybe not so much in my time maybe before my time um but let me use my mother's time gone are the days when you're walking by and you see your semi-distant neighbors and near neighbors and you walk by and you dare not walk by and not say good morning you dare not walk by and if they saw something that needed to be dealt with they nipped it in the boat from there all right so it is a community that aided in 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 raising that child so that child was not just raised haphazardly or all of the brunt and all of the burden was just placed on the mother and the father or the guardian or the grandmother whoever it is that that child may have been grown up with you know so, uh, you know, I speak with a lot of older persons and they say, gone are those days when you could not pass your neighbor and say, and not say good morning, good evening. If they saw where you were on the road, you couldn't even pass a certain time. Sun had to be almost shining brightly still. And you must have been, you would have had to be out of your uniform. Home, reading a book, studying or doing some household chores because the devil, as they would say, find time for idle hands. And uh, gone are those days where the community was almost like a watchman over the child when the parent or the parents or the guardians or the grandparents were not around. And that is why there was at then, at that time, you found that crime and violence was clearly less and was not as predominant as what it is now. Yes. You know, the, the scripture that talks about, uh, um, you know, man's heart is desperately wicked and evil and the times will get more wicked and evil. Yes, I can understand that. But there's a reason why the, the Bible said, train up a child in the way he should go, that when he's old, he not depart from it. He will not depart from it. And um, really what it is saying is that once there are principles that are embedded in that child, 
even if you're stray because we name human beings there you're just gonna have bad days and you will have good days but even if it is that you stray there will come a time when you say look here i finished with the foolishness and there are certain things that you will just not engage in because the, fun, the foundation, the principles that if you look at John Piaget, those earlier psychologists and Vygotsky and all of those people that talk about the formative years, 0 to 7 or 0 to 8, they're about, then you would have realized that those impartation of principles, of rules and relationship working in tandem, that was parted down and given and passed down to the child, um, you found that that society or that group of persons would have been living healthily. And I'm talking socially now. So you would have, therefore, reduction in crime and violence and certain kinds of negative and evil activities because um, of how the child was raised. Somebody was saying to me that a few years ago, some years ago, I don't remember how long ago, there was a prominent man or politician, I wasn't sure who said, to deal with the big issues, you have to deal with the small things. It's just like when you're building a house. So every big thing is a sum of small things. So your block, one block, one steel, each of them added together, create that house, that beautiful house that you live in. You know? So it is for every big thing, it's a sum of small things. It's just like a man who became wealthy or becomes wealthy. It's added up. So they save a dollar today, then a dollar tomorrow, and it continues, and it continues until they amass that wealth. All right, so likewise, if it is that you impart that knowledge, not, not, that, not the knowledge only, but your principles, the, the fundamentals that will create the, the kinds of children that you would want for future, then you would have known that the fundamental principles would have had to be started from early days. So if you don't want your child to become a thief, you teach your child to not become a thief. If you don't want your child to become a murderer, then you teach your child to not become a murderer. And what we do not understand sometimes, what we fail to understand is that if it is that we negate in the responsibilities that we're given as parents and guardians and grandparents and what have you, then we will reap the seed that we sow. So the crime and the violence that we're facing today in this country has a lot to do with what went on in the home the principles that were passed on are the lack thereof and uh, my encouragement to each and every one who is a parent who is a guardian who is a grandparent wherever you may fall even if it is that you're not a parent is that if you want to see a change to jamaica you would have to have to change heart so you too would have to be one of the contributors in passing down that principle in each child that you come across, each person that you encounter, so that you can see a better Jamaica. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to tell you all of that. You, can, you have the Bible as one of the benchmark, as guide to tell you. There are many books written, you know, given, you know, being inspired by the Bible to teach you in how it is to cause a reduction in crime and violence. I'm saddened, I'm not going to not be honest with you, I'm saddened for where we are as a country now. And one of the paramount things that has that have caused or has caused that kind of uh, present situation that we're facing now in Jamaica is a fact that we are now for a while have been in this mood me can't bother I can't be bothered it's too much stress and it's ironic that we have had that mantra going for a while me can't bother if we look in our own selves you know we can't bother because it has not affected us as yet the crime and the violence has not come home as yet for now and what we don't realize is that when we say we can't bother, but we can't bother, the plague is widening and it is stretching farther and farther and closer to us. And then one day it will hit us close and hit us bullseye right there. Maybe God forbid it may be your child or your husband or your wife or somebody close to you who is a victim of a perpetrator because of the can't bother mentality. You know, can't bother. 
You see a man bad drive you on the road. Let me keep going. Me can't bother. Can't bother with the hassle. Can't bother with the noise. Ah, uh, you see a child misbehaving on the road. Lord, me can't bother. It's not my child. Um, what else? You see somebody stealing. Lord, me can't bother. It's not my things I'm stealing. And it's not great them stealing anyway. It's just cookie out of the cookie pan kind of a thing. And we ignore all of these things. And we say we can't be bothered and we can't be bothered. Because it really has not directly affected us. Not knowing that we are created to serve each other. To help each other to be a brother and our sisters keep up. So that we have the reduction in the crime and the violence. And all these negative things that we so abhor. And it is sad that we have been uh, we have been enunciated in this mantra called uh, me myself and i that's a that's a mantra that has taken over the country me myself and i and once it doesn't affect me or myself or i then it matters not and that is what has been the order of the day me can bada or me, myself, and I. It has not hit home yet. Or it has not hit home, so I can't be bothered. I would want to hope that we reduce more of the talking moving forward that's I, right now that's the only thing i really can see and we go into action and we come out of this theory or this belief that if we talk or if we say anything or if we challenge the status quo we will lose we will lose our respect we will lose our friends we will lose our money we will lose our jobs we will lose our sa peace and safety and all of these wonderful things can i tell you if you don't talk you're gonna dead and if you talk you're gonna dead but guess what happened? there may be one that will give you some fulfillment and some kind of a joy since it is that you are created to serve since it is that you can't escape life alive why not decide to become a world changer? And when I speak of world changer, it may not be the entire world, but it may be the world that you live in, the space that you inhabit. Why not become a world changer? Why not make the contributions where you're able to make a contribution? So you see a child misbehaving. It's not your child. It could have been your child. You know, just as if, let's juxtapose it. Suppose it was your child on the road misbehaving. You'd want somebody to in a healthy way correct your child discipline your child in a healthy manner likewise since it is a part of your your duty here as a human being is to serve others you can decide and make that concerted effort to nip it in the bud so that you spare one child from becoming a mass murderer or a kleptomania or some kind of a nuisance to the society you'd be surprised at what one encouraging yet disciplinarian word may do to that child i was listening to a, a motivational speaker who for years had allowed as a little boy persons to say oh you are done so you can't do this you're not good all kinds of things and one day a teacher heard all of that and the teacher called the little boy aside and said listen you don't allow anyone to dictate who you are you are specially made and you can contribute to the society today this person is a top motivational speaker because of what that little word of encouragement that the teacher gave and naturally other things started to take place so it was a turning point for that little boy so i'm saying don't underestimate a simple kind word a simple healthy disciplinarian word to a child or to anyone that you may encounter I'm not saying that each time you're going to do it every time, but sometimes when you feel that unction and that leading you, go ahead and you do it. You're here to serve each other. You're here to serve your country. Jamaica is a beautiful place. And I'm very despondent with what has happened and what is happening. Because we, and I'm speaking of myself, also have allowed a lot of these things because we saw things and we ignore them. We don't realize that um, infestation takes place but just by the small things just like oh, when you see this big mansion and 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 all the palaces and all of that it starts with the very small thing whether it's a block or a steel or a stone or whatever it is 
you know Jamaica is a beautiful land and I pray that for those of us who want to see it maintain its beauty let us join together in unity and play our part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race you remember that pledge we have to play our part we need to play our part and I can only pray that the words that we utter will be enunciated in our lives permeate through us and become a part of us and that we will act it out because I remember when we were going to school you know for the way you know when you talk about the verb the active word you know we talk yes it's good to talk but we really have to walk the walk so I'm encouraging us you know for those of us who value our country and we want to see Jamaica up and running again in the right direction let us make the changes where we can don't underestimate how small it is it is never too small it can make that difference in each child it lessens the possibility of that child becoming a nuisance to the society so where you see wrong you correct it you correct wrong with within your own selves and then you expand it and you extend it to others outside all right so my beautiful people I want to wish you a wonderful day I want to wish you a wonderful week and remember we are on the road to success in spite of the different challenges that we may face in spite of the the different issues that we're facing we're still on the road to, su to success to prosperity and to progress so have a beautiful day bless